need to be able to cut foam out of a case is you're going to need your case. That's step one. You're going to need uh, whatever it is you're putting in there. You have to have it on hand, ready to go. And you're going to need a Sharpie or any sort of marker. Black works, silver works, doesn't really matter as long as it's not like yellow or something where you can see it when you draw on the foam here. Um, if you have this kind of foam, where it's the, the pluckable type, where you just kind of break it off and pull it, then by all means do that rather than trying to cut it. But if it's just a solid piece of foam, kind of like the top of this is here, um, you're definitely going to need a, uh, a razor knife. Today we're just going to talk about the, the, uh, the pull and plug type just because that's what I have here. This is a, uh, it's a Plano gun guard, uh, waterproof or weatherproof rather, uh, Plano gun guard weatherproof case. Um, it's the one with the more heavy duty uh, body and latches, handle, all that good stuff. It's the, uh, the 42 inch gun case. I opted for this one because I was just looking for something to hold my AR and I have other Plano cases but they're really flimsy and thin and they don't really close well so I decided to just spend the extra extra money and get one of these. I'd rather have a, a Hardig or a Pelican case myself but for $200 it's kind of a stretch uh, when you can get this thing for $70. The, uh, the regular Plano cases cost about $20, $25, somewhere in there, depending on where you get it. So for the cost of probably three, you get one of these. Personally, I think it's a better investment. Also, I should note on this case, if you don't want this foam, you don't have to use it. You can simply pull it out. It's not glued in or anything. And there's some more of the, uh, the dimpled foam underneath. And you can just fill it that way do that if you need to change the configuration or whatnot. And I believe uh, Plano does sell the, uh, the foam sheets and if they don't, someone else does and I'll, uh, I'll find a link for a website that sells it and uh, try, to, try to post that link for you. But anyway, cutting foam. First thing to note, you're going to rake your fingers across it and you're going to see how big these, uh, these squares are about a centimeter and it's one solid rectangle that goes all the way through but you also need to note that there is a border along the, uh, the edge here where well, there is no uh, no squares so you can't can't pull foam out I'd say about a about an inch or so away from it and that's just to protect it so that you don't accidentally pull that out and then you got your gun or camera equipment or whatever you're holding smacking against the side of the case. All right, the first thing you want to do is lay your, lay your equipment in the case. I recommend going opposite of how you want to store it. Personally, I like the muzzle face in the left, so we're placing it with the muzzle face in the right because you're going to draw on the phone not going to get exactly on each cube unless you try to draw it that way but it just it, that's too much of a hassle I think so you're going to do that lay it out uh, I have an AR-15 two Magpul P-Mags then you want to take your Sharpie and just trace along the edges of everything and uh, I've already traced mine. But then you can lift your, your equipment out of the way. Set it off somewhere safe. And what you're left with is a rough outline of whatever it is that you're storing. And like I said, um, you can see here where it's not really 100% exact. And there will probably be some Sharpie marks left over this one here stuff like that so this way you can just pluck them out you got this line and when you're done 
you just flip it over and it's really clean. Okay. Alright, we're going to go ahead and start plucking. You just put your finger in there and you can pull several out at a time. And that's, that's all that's holding together is that thin amount of foam. So they, they pop out pretty easily. But you just want to reach a finger in there and just kind of scoop them. And try to hold it with the other hand and be real careful not to tear the wrong one. But you can take a big old chunk like this. It's a lot easier to do it this way and to... Uh, Pulling out one at a time. And you can go straight through here. Just like that. And try to stay inside the lines here. Um, when you come across things like this where it's a uh, kind of an angle, this one, this block right here, it uh, it's got barely any of of the uh, the mark on there, so we're gonna go ahead and leave that. This one, more than half of the block is, uh, that camera, more than half of the block is inside the lines, so we're going to go ahead and pull that. The initial plucking, I guess you could say, rule of thumb, tends to be uh, go by halves. If half of the, uh, the block is inside the line, go ahead and pull it. If half, you know, if more than half is outside the line, Go ahead and leave it. And you can always go in. The reason you do that is because you can always go in and pull more blocks later. got it pretty much shaped out, so we're going to go ahead and test fit it. I did forget this part right here. So, go ahead and test fit it right now. Let's see how it works. You see we're snagging on some foam right here. So we're going to go ahead and pop this whole layer. We got the scope cap and the charging handle getting in the way there. Come across a few more problems. Uh, you can see the swivel, the sling swivel and the uh, pistol grip are getting a little, a little bit caught up. So pop out two more here. It's in there pretty tight. Close it up. You're doing pretty all right. Now it's all all that's left is the magazines.
like I said now, we have space for AR-15 magazines and your rifle. What we will do now, we'll take it, carefully flip it. Store it exactly as planned. I want this guy to make it a little easier to get the rifle in and out. Your custom rifle case. You have a self contained, watertight, for the most part, waterproof, I should say, case. It does have the, uh, the rubber gasket on the lid here, running through it, so it should be fairly waterproof. I wouldn't try to throw it in the water, but it does work for what it is and what it costs. can't really complain too much. There you have it.